you love me, please don't judge me Got my hands tied, the power's above me Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a puppet here If you wanna place blame, then look to the puppeteer Family, fortune, envy, jealousy, privilege Passed on, legacy, secret, sabotage, borderline How's it going, everybody? It's C-Rad TV back here with another video. So, of course, it's time to continue on to what if NASCAR had the F1 points format series. So, the last time in this series, we took a look at the ARCA series in the 2000s. And we're not, not a whole lot would have changed under the F1 points format in ARCA. And that Frank Kimmel would still bitch slap the field under the F1 points format. And still dominate the field with an iron fist. And in this part, we're going to wrap up the ARCA side of this What If series by taking a look at the ARCA series in the 2010s to see what would have changed and what would have stayed the same had they used the F1 points format. And of course, before we begin, um, may, make sure you also check out the official NASCAR at F1 points Twitter and Instagram pages for exclusive NASCAR at F1 points content. I always post content there daily, so if you're interested in checking those out, make sure you check it out. But yeah, anyway... With that all being said, here's the points format we're going to be using on the screen here. So, of course, this is the current F1 points format we have here. I've gone over a couple of times, and like I mentioned before, not doing the fastest lap from 2019 on because it's a massive pain in the butt to find it, and they do a terrible job of tracking it. And we're not doing double points because double points is a stupid and dumb gimmick, and I'm not doing gimmicks for this. So, yeah, there you go. And before we continue on, let me once again stress out that this is just a hypothetical scenario. I know everyone would have raced differently if they used the F1 points format. This is just for fun. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. So the 2010 season, it was a close three-man battle for the championship between Patrick Sheltra, Craig Ghost, and Tom Hezard. Those three were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency, in the end, though, Craig Ghost and Tom Hezard would all fail to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. And Patrick Sheltra would take full advantage when he would pull away in the season, late in the season. And Patrick Sheltra would lock up the 2010 ARCA Championship with a race to go in the season. So Patrick Sheltra would still be the 2010 champion under this format. So the 2011 championship, it would have been a two-man battle for the title between Ty Dillon and Chris Buescher. Those two were the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. Nobody was on their levels. In the end, though, Chris Buescher would fail to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. Ty Dillon would take full advantage of it and would pull away late in the season. And Ty Dillon would wrap up the 2011 ARCA championship with a race to go in the season. Locking it up, so Ty Dillon would still win the 2011 ARCA Championship under this format. So the 2012 season, it was a mainly a three-man battle for the championship between Chris Buescher, Frank Kimmel, and Alex Bowman. Those three were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. In the end, though, late in the season, Alex Bowman and Frank Kimmel would fail to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. Chris Buescher would take full advantage of it with pull away late in the season. And Chris Buescher would lock up the ARCA championship with a race to go in the season. So Chris Buescher would still win the title under this format in 2012. Now, Alex Bowman would go on and win the season finale at Kansas. But all that win did was just make the championship look a lot closer than it actually was. So for the 2013 season, the season was all about, you guessed it, guess who? Frank Kimmel. Frank Kimmel had a career revival in 2013 and was the class of the field all season at a very old age, but still didn't stop the old bastard from dominating the season and being the class of the field. 
in terms of speed and consistency. Like, nobody was on Frank Kimmel's level in 2013. And Frank Kimmel, he would easily cruise in the 2013 ARCA Championship. So, Frank would still win the title in 2013, but this would be his ninth title under this format instead of his tenth. So the 2014 season, it was a close two-man battle for the championship between Mason Mitchell and Grant Enfinger. Those two were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. A very close title battle between the two that in the end, the championship would go all the way down to the season finale of Kansas. With Grant Enfinger entering with a 19-point lead over Mason Mitchell. So for Mason Mitchell, all he had for him to win the championship, he would need to win the race. And he would need Mace, you need Grant Enfinger to finish 8th or worse to win the championship. For Grant Enfinger to lock up the championship, he just either had to finish 7th or better or hope that Mason Mitchell finished 2nd or worse to lock up the title. In the season finale at Kansas, Grant Enfinger and Mason Mitchell ran throughout top 5 and top 10 most of the race. In the end of late in the race, Grant Enfinger would end up being involved in a crash. Wade would finish 17th with a DNF. So I'll set up at the end to where Mason Mitchell could win the race. Mason Mitchell could win the championship. In the end, Mason Mitchell would fall well short of goal by finishing fifth in the finale. And that fifth place finish would be more enough for Grant Enviger to edge out Mason Mitchell for the championship by nine points. So Grant Enviger would be the 2014 ARCA champion under this format. So the 2015 season was all about Grant Enfinger. Grant Enfinger was just a class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. Like nobody was on Grant Enfinger's level in 2015. And Grant Enfinger, he would easily cruise to the 2015 ARCA Championship. The difference is under this format, this would be Grant Enfinger's second title instead of his first. And that Grant Enfinger would go back. So Grant Enfinger would go back to back in 2015 under this format. So for the 2016 season, it will be all about Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe was just a class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. Like nobody was on Chase Briscoe's level in 2016. And Chase Briscoe would easily cruise to the 2016 ARCA Championship under this format. So the 2017 season, it was all about Austin Terrio. Okay, I think we all know about the Austin Terrio's 2017 Arca season. I think we all watched a number of Kamikaze Games' videos about it, how Kamikaze has talked nonstop about it, and made that season a case on why Austin Terrio should have a top cup ride, or at least a damn expended year truck ride, for fuck's sakes. But yeah, anyway, long story short, Austin Terrio was class of the field. No one was on his level in 2017. It was one of the greatest seasons in Arca's recent memory since Frank Kimmel's early 2000s success. And Austin Terrio, he would easily cruise to the 2017 Arca Championship. And it's still a goddamn tragedy that that Austin Terrio doesn't have a top spin in your cup or truck ride. Like, hell, for fuck's sakes, he at least deserves a Rick Ware ride. Someone give this man a fucking ride. He fucking deserves a top ride in at least Cup Trucks or Xfinity. Come on. So the 2018 season, it was all about Sheldon Creed. Sheldon was just the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consist consistency there. And Sheldon Creed, he would easily go on and cruise to the 2018 ARCA Championship in 2018 under this format. So for the 2019 season, it was a two-man battle for the championship between Christian Akis and Michael Self. Those two were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. And in the end, 
The championship will go all the way down to the season finale at Kansas Speedway. With Christian Eckes entering with a 21 point lead over Michael Self. So for Michael Self to win the championship, he would have to win the race and would need Eckes to finish ninth or worse to have a shot at the championship. For Eckes to win the title, he simply needed to finish 8th or better, regardless of where Self finished. But Eckes could also lock it up if Self finished 2nd or worse. In the season finale at um, Kansas Speedway, both Eckes and Self ran up front for a majority of the race. In the end, though, Michael Self would end up finishing second, and then Christian Eckes would do everything he would need to to lock up the championship by winning the season finale at Kansas. So, and that win would be more than enough for Eckes to win the championship over Michael Self by 29 points. So, Christian Eckes would still win the 2019 championship under this format in ARCA. So yeah, anyway, that's going to wrap it up here for this part of the What If series. So yeah, quite a bit would have happened on our DF1 points format in the 2010s for ARCA. Like in terms of championship battles in ARCA, we would have only two title battles go down to the season finale in ARCA in the 2010s under this format. And under this format, we would only have one title change under this format, and that would be 2014. So yeah, mainly for a lot of it, there were a couple championships that were decided when a race to go... The two that went down to the season finale and then all the others were just complete dominations from a lot of different drivers having breakout years. So yeah. So yeah, under this format, almost a, not a whole lot would change under this format. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the Arca side of this What If series. Like I mentioned before, the Arca, well, we're going to go over the Arca series for the 2020 season in the near the end of the series in the like second last episode of the series when we go through the 2020 seasons for arca east arca west arca the penny series that wild modifieds the mexico series and then the wheel the euro series so yeah anyway that will be near the end so yeah that's gonna wrap it up for this part in the arca side the what if series so next time on the what if series we're gonna be gonna start the next wing of this what if series by taking a look at the nascar penny series which is the NASCAR series in Canada, to see what would have changed and what would have stayed the same under that F1 points format. But yeah, anyway, and that part will come out depending on how fast I make it. So yeah, anyway, that's going to wrap it up here, and that's all i got to say. Hope everyone's a great day, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Peace.